This movie will review how to reduce and combine data from a USAX instrument installed at Sector 15 IDB mine um, Station D and it will review uh, how to uh, reduce data from the Bonsa Hart USAX instrument how to reduce data from the built-in pin sax instrument and from the sometime used built-in wax instrument which then can be combined together to create a wide very wide ra wide range <coughs> data set this uh, will review it using an Igor Pro and packages Indra, Irina and Nika so the first thing which you need to do is when you come from an instrument is to have all the data which you may need in the window which you have in front of you here are actually two sets of data one of them is the standard set when we use a step scanning in the Bonse Hart USAX instrument and in that case you have a spec file name Typically, it would have a month under bar date under bar some kind of username dot DAT. This contains all of the step scanning data, including all of the metadata. So if you collected data on the USAX instrument, here are your data. That's all you need. Now, if you also collected data using the PINSAX instrument, you will have a folder which has the same name under bar SX and if you also collected data using the wax then you have a folder with the same name under bar wax now you don't necessarily have to have the sax and wax folders if you did not collect the data now this is how the USAX was collecting data uh, with step scanning uh, basically since 1999 till about 2014 Currently, and I'm recording this in February 2014, we actually have a second option how to collect data on the Bonse Hart instrument, and that is using what is called fly scanning. It's not a step scanning through the angle range, but it's a fly scanning through it. In that case, the data are not actually inside the uh, spec file, but here later on, on 219, we collected data on a fly scan and inside it, so in this case we have a folder with data, inside the folder are HDF files, and here you can see a set of HDF files related to a blank and a sample measured at different times. These data collect these data represent a USAX Bonse Hart USAX data collected slightly different way but they reduce very similarly to the spec step scanning step scans and they can also be combined with the sax and wax so you may actually have three folders one of them with fly one of them with sax one of them with wax or you can have a, fo a file plus two folders the data reduction is pretty much similar. I will now go through the data reduction and show you the steps necessary to do it. So first thing is start Igor Pro. Today the latest version is 6.34a. If if you start the Igor Pro, zoom it up to the full scope, to the full screen, and then what you want to do is load the USEX macros. These macros will present you with the README, which describes in a nutshell what I'm going to talk about now. You need the IRENA package and you also need the NICA package for the ERA detector based data for the sax and wax. So now by having all three of these packages you can now start. You always want to start with the Bonse Hart step scanning USAX. USAX data are absolutely calibrated, the intensity is on absolute scale, they span the largest range of intensities and Q vectors and so they are considered to be the baseline of our instrument. So here you have a choice, if you click on that you can import raw data which would be the file, the, steps, uh, the step scanning, the spec file, or here is another tool which allows you to import fly scan data. I will walk you through both of them. So now first let's go for the spec file. We click on this and we get a choice of find where the data are. So let's go to desktop and test data and let's find the file called, called uh, something with DAT. Open 
and here is a panel which presents you with the uh, file, uh, with the step scans which are inside this file. You can load all of these data, which is the default settings, or you can load just a range of scans or just selected scans. In this case, I just want a few of them, so I'm going to load selected scans, and I happen to test first a scan, for example, C66 dry, and I'm going to load the data. When you load the data first time, there's a pop-up window which comes up. Don't worry about that pop-up window. It's generally correct. You just hit continue on that. What happens is these data were now loaded. And so in the data browser in Igor, what you can see, there's some data which will be in a raw folder. We are not going to worry about those. We will have a USAX data here. And inside that is going to be a folder with the name uh, of the of the spec file and inside that is a folder containing all the data related to your sample C666 drive. We also need a blank so in that case I believe I should use this paddle captain blank and I just load the data here and data are automatically created. Now this should be all you need from the from the spec file if you want to reduce just this one file. Of course most likely what you would do is you would load in either all or a range of the scans. You can see that one spec file can contain a very large number of, uh, of files of scans of, uh, of, of samples. Okay so the next choice is <clears throat> we may have the data, USEX data, collected by the fly scan. So in that case, you can go in and import the fly scan data. The fly scan data are separate files in a folder. So you want to go select data path. But now instead of going to a folder, uh, to a file, you're going to go to a folder. So here we need to point it to the folder containing the underbar fly at the end. Say OK. And here you say have a scans uh, on these samples. And... <coughs> you can see that we, I collected the same blank and same sample at different times. What we'll just use is 240 seconds in this case. Uh, so there is a lot of separate files and all you really need to do is either select them and hit import or actually if you just simply double click on that you will find out that your data are now and in this case it was collected by a user called Christy and the data go in the folder, in a USEX folder, in the Christie folder, so that's blank, and we want to have one sample, so we come in here and double click on that, or just select a range of them and hit import, and then we have a second sample, 240 seconds, in a folder called Christie. So here we have the step scanning data, here are the fly scanning data. We now need to reduce these data and collect, create a USEX data set, which will be usable for the modeling or anything else. That is done using reduce data main panel and when this panel comes up it's same for both fly scan and step scan. The first thing you need to do is you want to collect data and process them as a blank. So you click in here, blank is an instrumental curve, you always have to have an instrumental curve in order to reduce the data. So you click process and blank, you now have a one choice here we're going to pick the paddle capped on blank and hit load and process. Now, <clears throat> what happens is that this data are loaded and processed. This is now intensity versus a Q vector. And these plots actually, both of them are the same data. This is a log intensity versus log Q. And you can see that we measure data from basically this is about the Q, 10 to minus 5 is considered to be Q equals 0. And we go about to 0.2 inverse angstroms. In order to identify where the peak center is, we have a plot here in which we fitted a modified Gauss function, and that provides us with these numbers here. Full width at half max represents the rocking curve width in degrees, in arc seconds, sorry, in arc seconds of the channel cut crystals. Uh, max is maximum intensity. It's an arbitrary intensity after scaling to I0 gain and everything else. And this is a beam center. That's where your center of the, 
of the it's that's where the q equals zero is and you can see that we got those in, uh, including the errors the important thing here is that this blue curve has to be a good representation of the top of the peak the peak is typically slightly distorted so this is just about as good fit as you get do not fit the data way too much low you don't really care about that what you're trying to get is approximately the correct maximum and correct width of these data that's important it goes in calibration parameters when you have the right fit and these fit typically are okay uh, rarely fails you just hit save data and that creates in the folder which you were just working in which was this one here so this is our sample we are just processing and inside there now are is a triplet of waves uh, of the Igor waves data which is an intensity Q vector and error associated and considered to be blank we then go in and process the fly scan now notice this step scanning it has the original number of points the total number of points is typically 150, 200, maybe 220, 250. In some rare occasions, we actually run maybe 2000. But you can see this is a step scanning in angle and the data are approximately logarithmically distributed, uh, log, log angle distributed. So they look on a logarithmic scale, they are linear. Now, if I load the fly scan data, oops that's a second sample sorry i want to blank load the fly scan data what you notice is there's a lot more points in here the fly scan data connect collect data on a linear angular scale and the result is somewhere around 100,000 points over the usex range in order to process them here they are rebinned down to a re more reasonable number and then you can see we have a peak fit to the top that looks really good and you can basically look at it and say well that looks pretty much one thing i forgot to mention is over the scan our photodiode amplifier changes the gain five times this is range one range two range three range four and range five and there, if you click on the diode tab you get colors and you can see how well the uh, the gain range changes merge that's sometimes useful to see because that is a place where sometimes you can see artifacts Anyway, so for now we can simply save these data and now we have a blank both for the step scanning and for the uh, fly scanning. The next step is we uncheck this little checkbox, pick a sample and now we pick the appropriate blank for it. So in this case there would be this one here uh, and hit load and process. What you can see is that the top of the peak of the sample has been now fitted with the modified fit, modified Gauss. Um, you have a choice of other functions, which is useful under some conditions, but if you cannot get this fit right, you probably want to contact the beamline scientist. You now have, in this other graph, you now have the red curve, which is your uh, measured data sample, and you have the black curve, which is this blank, which we just created, the paddle capped on blank. So the black curve and red curve, they should meet very well at really, really low Qs. That's where the main peak is. And eventually there should be a deviation from uh, the rocking curve, from the instrumental curve, which is where your data really start. Now, what you want to do now is take the rounded cursor and put it on a first point you can trust that is significantly deviating from the instrumental curve. That's a start of your data. Depending on how well the sample start, how well it scatters, at which angles it starts scattering, this cursor may be somewhere out here, typically the lowest points about 10 to minus 4, which is the resolution of the instrument. Or if the sample doesn't scatter at low Q and scatters only at higher Qs, then of course this point may be somewhere out here. Maybe the red curve will follow the black curve all the way out here and only here will start deviating, so which is the, the, the rounded cursor will go here. If you position the rounded cursor, you may want to hit the recalculate button, which will recalculate data across the range which you are using. Now, based on these two heights, based these two fit, uh, peak fits, you can actually calculate the sample transmission. So if you click on display sample and blank, the fitting the peaks together, the maxima in the peak fits together, will get you a sample transmission. This is a usual method how Bonsehard instruments can measure the sample transmission. 
The other choice is, which we have been using recently, is we actually have a photodiode in the beam itself and uh, just under the crystals. And before each measurement, we put a relatively large photodiode into the beam and expose it for a few seconds and cal calculate the transmission the regular way as a standard pin sex, uh, pinhole sax instrument would do. That's actually a better, um, a better transmission. And typically these transmission vary a little bit. This pin diode transmission here, which is on the panel here in this place, typically accounts for things like multiple scattering and various other, and very strong scattering near the peak and other things, which do happen. And so we currently consider pin diode transmission to be the correct one. And so you can see that's actually off by, by about 10% from the peak-to-peak -peak transmission. Now, peak-to-peak -peak transmission is used for the subtraction of these two curves because you have to use the right one because you have to match the peak height. On the other hand, for the absolute intensity calibration, we now use the spin diode transmission. You want to probably, under most circumstances, you want to use the pin diode transmission unless something bad happened or you have problematic data. In that case, you would uncheck it. But if you do that, talk with the beamline scientist. There are various other methods here about calibration. Typical calibration when the sample thickness is known, and this is a sample thickness provided at the time of measurement. If it's wrong, you can change that. If you have a right sample thickness, then you can calibrate data and you get standard centimeter square per centimeter cube calibration. If you have powders or any other samples, it is possible to use calibrate and cali to centimeter square per gram. Here it gets a little bit more cumbersome and you probably want to talk with the beamline scientist before you get anywhere and do it. Now out here you can also check colors and see how well the range changes merge together. If you see any artifacts here, you want to contact the beamline scientist. The other tabs are of no interest to a regular user, so don't worry about them. So if you set this up and, and run this, most of the time all you need to do is make sure this is correctly set so it's in a place where a red curve sufficiently deviates at least a factor of two, maybe three, off the instrumental curve. And then that the thickness is right, and then you can simply say save data. This creates a slit smeared, or if you have a 2D collimated USAX pinhole, pin, pinhole collimated data, uh, USAX data on absolute scale. Nothing else is required. Now, <clears throat> let's do the fly scan. So we have a second sample here and we select the blank. So now you have the right blank and the right sample. You hit load and process. And what you see here is that we now overlap these two data sets together. You can again display this and figure out that these two samples happen to have about 73% uh, percent transmission. If you look down here on the pin diode transmission, this sample does not scatter strongly at low Qs. So there's really no correction. Both of these transmissions basically agree very well together. That's a standard situation if you have no multiple scattering and relatively weak regular, spin, regular small angle scattering. If you have a really strong uh, small angle scattering at low Q or you have a multiple scattering, those two numbers will not agree. Anyway, so what I will do is I will move this rounded cursor a little bit uh, further up so you can see that the deviation is out here. I can do a recalculate which will improve the data out here. I can check the diode transmission and you can see how the data uh, nicely merge together. And now I have one more thing to consider. Uh, the previous data set was collected with 200 steps. This one here was collected with a about 100,000 steps. It is rebinned for just pure numerical reasons for processing the red curve and black curve at about 20,000 points. But the final curve, you need to select the number of points which describes well the science. Too many and your data analysis software is gonna be overloaded and will not be able to work. Too few and you may not have the right a number of points to describe the science. So a typical one would be two or 300. You can easily do 900, for example, here. And if you recalculate, you can see you get a lot more points on this curve, but they're getting more noisy and they really do not add any useful information on the data. Or you can do it 200 
and then you can see that the data get much more sparse but those go the noise goes down because this is done by averaging so make your pick pick the right number of points which you need in this case we'll just leave this in here and say save again if this is the correct transmission by saving the data all the other numbers uh, sorry this correct thickness and all the other numbers are accounted for and the data are on absolute scale in other words this blue curve is against the right hand axis and this is a slit smeared absolute intensity using a calibration of centimeter square per centimeter cube this is all that needs to be done with the bonze hard usex data you just successfully created bonze hard data for the uh, for the two samples and you already have one two three three and a and a little bit decades in intensity in Q of the data so let's close the windows and now what we have is we now have the standard uh, standard bonze hard stuff however if you collected data on the pin sags data you can now add data which span about 0.05 uh, Q Q equals 0.05 to about 1 or 1.1 inverse angstrom. So you get the high Q range of data better measured. That can be now reduced using the Nika package. And we have that for the sample C666 dry. And also uh, you can have data on a wax which span the diffraction area, wide angle scattering. And we have that for this sample here. So now I'm going to walk you through the data reduction of these data. The first thing what you want to do is load the Nika and you want to go and pick instrument configurations from the SAS 2D panel and pick the 15 ID SACs. Now that puts, puts up a instructions where you can follow these instructions and I'm going to walk you through these instructions next and it puts up uh, a panel here which allows you to configure the system. It is important you follow the next steps because that will take and make your life really really easy. So the first thing is decide what you're going to do is 15 IDD pin sacks is the Bonsehar data at higher Q which we're going to do now or you have a choice of wax. This last choice here is the for a, a big large pinhole sex camera in the back of the 15 ID which is used independently as a separate instrument. So let's do first the pin sex data. What you want to do is set default methods first and you want to point this to the folder which contains the sex data. So you're going to pick the username under bar sex. Okay and okay it configures all of these tools here to whatever you need next step is relatively straightforward we just need to load any one of these files which should contain these are hdf files they contain all of the metadata so i'm going to pick the one which i use and you can easily do that by simply say masking it with the name here and i'm going to pick this one i'm going to analyze just the dry one and I simply double click that. When you double click this image, it gets loaded in. And this is an image of the file. And then it loads in all of this header information. Notice there are information about when it was run, what the sample was, and who, this, who the user is. And now there are other data here. All the transmission data. There is a, a CCD center, pixels, tilts. Everything is in here. You do not need to do any calibration at all. Can close this you can even close this by having loaded the correct data set now this is the pin sags data set here you can now say set experiment setting now notice before i do that the the parameters in here 500 millimeters wavelength one pixel size one these are default parameters okay if i had set experiment settings these get overwritten with the appropriate settings for your experiment 535 87 millimeters was the distance pixel size on pilatus is 172 microns beam center beam center tilts everything else also all of these little check boxes get set correctly and if you look in here you will find out is there are functions which when you import an image they will correctly calculate a sample monitor empty monitor and sample transmission what you need to do is you have to go in empty and dark 
and you have to insert the appropriate blank because that's the part which I do not know how to find out. So what we do is we pick a kept on blank and load that at which point down here we see it's a paddle kept on blank and whatever. So now what we have in there we have the blank and we have a sample. We can do the sample. Now before we do that you want to create slit smear data so you can easily match with the data which we already created. To do it, it's you need to put in a slit length. If there is no slit length, you either have to type it in or the easiest way is if you already use the uh, USEX data, just hit this button set length. It will pick any one of these which is correct and it will insert the slit length. This is a typical slit length, 0.026 or so for the USEX instrument. You can also say delete temp data because you're probably not going to need them. Don't worry about the other checkboxes, you probably don't need them at all. That's all you need to do is you just come in here and pick the data set you want to process one or more. You can process all of them if you want, just picking start and end and process all of them. And then you come down here to the button and say convert selected files one at a time and the system will go through and what you find out is that it will generate an intensity versus Q vector curve for your data set. And we can close that, we can close this. Now what will happen inside the data browser is you took an image and you created a folder called PINSAX in which is going to be a folder which will have the name of the sample which we just processed and it will have an extension or, or underbar USX at the end which tells you these are USX slit smear data. It will have a Q which is a scattering vector, R which is an intensity and S which is an error. It also has a W which is a width of, of the peaks, uh, width of the bins as in, in Q units. You really don't have to worry about that too much. So the USX data, if you look on the USX data which we created, they have a different naming system than the data from the pinhole instrument. USEX will have SMR, which is slit smeared, underbar intensity, Q vector, and error. The pinhole data have a Q underbar and the name R, which is an intensity, and S, which is an error. Uh, there is a lot of history behind that. Hopefully, this is okay. We call these, this naming system USEX and this naming system the QRS. So this way you could, I have reduced one of these images. I could reduce all of them by simply selecting all of them and hitting convert selected images one at a time. They will get processed. They will be properly scaled by using I0. They will get empty field subtracted. There is no dark field for the Pilatus detector. They will use this. They will use terminal transmission. They are not on absolute scale, but they are otherwise fully corrected. Next, what we want to do is reduce the wax data. We will follow the same procedure and it's slightly, even slightly easier. So what you do is you click wax, you set the default methods and now you point the system to the wax folder and say OK. And here you have, you're watching a wax folder and here you have, we're looking also for the files containing C666. And so we get just these three images. We double click that one. Now what you see is a lot of diffraction lines and there are some different numbers here like different centers and so on. And then what we do is we load these numbers because this is still the sax stuff. This is still the sax distances and so on. So we use that by set experiment settings. That overrode the distance, it overrode the beam centers and tilts and so on. There is no blank, nothing else for the pin sax for the wax data, we just simply do a circular average around the center. So you simply collect that and say convert. And it will create you a data set where you can see these diffraction peaks in here. Okay, so now I can close all of these windows because I'm done with data reduction. Okay, I have processed and reduced the pin sacks and wax. The next step is I now have, you look on that for that sample C666 dry, I have a USEX data, I have PINSEX data, I have WAX data. You can go in Igor and in IRENA and you can say plot the data, you can say plot me the USEX and there would be this one. So that's your USEX data, you can then change the naming system to QRS 
and pick the pin sex data. And then you can go in here and say do the wax and add that. And what you can see is that you now have a USAX, which is fully calibrated on absolute scale. So this is not an arbitrary intensity for USAX. Uh, this is uh, pin sex data. And that's a wax data. You can see it goes all the way out. It is always or sometimes really nice to be able to merge this together and present this as a one uh, combined data set. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. Let me close this, close that. Next is we go to IRENA data manipulation and we're going to data manipulation one. We pick here two data sets, one in the top window called USAX. We're going to pick one, which is the USAX data. Down here, we're going to pick the one which is now the pin sex data and add data and modify. What you can see is that it plots those two things together. Now, let me make the graph a little bit smaller. So the next step is I have to select a range of data which nicely overlaps. Rounded cursor, and this is important, goes somewhere on the blue curve, somewhere at the top before the very last few points. Sometimes the last few points are noisy or anything else. These ones actually look pretty nice. The square cursor needs to go on the red data here, somewhere higher. And where this is a, you can imagine this is small angle scattering and there's some flat background in here. You might sometime go in the flat background, sometime not. It depends. Uh, but you want to select the data where there's enough of uh, small angle scattering data, not too much of noise. So we select this. These data should overlap. So there should be a range of data which overlaps. There's a button here called Merge Data. And if you do this, it will scale the data set 2 to data set 1, and it will modify the background of data set 1 in the USAX data. So it gets the best fit in the overlapping region. So if I do this, what you find out is that it will overlap in this region and then scale the blue curve down together. And if it doesn't fit like out here, the last few points don't look right, you can start from the beginning, so you can do again. And instead of letting this cursor, you know, letting going only that as high, we can go to lower lower cues and then match data. Now it looks okay. So what we did now is we used the absolutely calibrated USAX data. We did not change those. They are scaled by one, but we subtracted some background from them, which is correct. There's always some flat background in the USAX instrument. We scaled the data set two to it, which is the pin sex data by going down. And it sets automatically combined data. It creates the black curve, which is your USAC, which is the combined curve. And it creates a name down here, which typically would be the name of the first data set under bar COMB. And so now what you can do is say save. Now this has created data set which now combines the USAX data with the pin sex data. Now what we can do is we can take and take these combined data and we can combine them with the WAX data. So we go into that, and what you see here is we now have, these are the USAX pin sex data, and we now need to select a range where they overlap in this region. You can zoom up to that area, and what you can see is you have the WAX data up here, USAX data up here, down here. So we can select the range here and there, this is a range of data which we're going to try to merge because it supposedly overlaps. And we're going to go in and say merge. Now it's rescales everything, so you may want to come in here and have a look if the scaling was good. And I think that qualifies reasonably well. Now there is some more background out here. We probably could have taken out some peaks out here, but that's pretty much good, good enough. So now what we did is we created a extended range data over there. Now you may want to change these name, the name here because it creates comp comp. Uh, we can simply say all and then say save. With this you have created a data which are combined all together. We just close this. I'm going to go to plotting tool. These now still are USAX data and they are all add data. And so here you see what we got. So you have USAX data, which spanned this range here. You get pin sex data, which spanned this range here. 
and you get wax data which span this range here. Uh, if you want to present this in a little better way, you can go to graph, packages, um, insert subwindow, and it pops up the insert. Then you can go in and you can create a second window inside this one and go to drawing tools, zoom, maybe make this one linear and here you have an example of the USAX, PINSAX, WAX data spanning one, two, three, four, four and a half decades in Q in scattering vectors and one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half decades in intensity on this specific sample. So this concludes the example of how to reduce and combine the USAX, PINSAX, WAX data together. If you follow this procedure, things should be really, really easy. If you decide that you need to recalibrate the distances, for example, using silver behenate or silicon standard, anything else, you should probably talk with the uh, beamline scientists, beamline staff, and they will help you to uh, reduce the data uh, and modify the reduction pro uh, procedure to whatever needs you have.